All right, folks. So this one here um, is kind of insane, and it all came from a single tweet I saw. I saw somebody posting a server-side template injection um, shellcode. <coughs> and I didn't know what that was, but it looked kind of like SQL injection. And it is kind of like SQL injection. And it shows you something about the internals of Python 3 that is sort of horrible. So um, what this does, let's use my, I have an example server that I've set up here. So let me demonstrate the basic issue on this simple little example server here, for starters. So what this is, it's just supposed to be a web app, and it's just a very simple web app. So if you search for anything like AA, it will always say it found it. User AA exists. It doesn't even have a database. It just performs a search function and repeats back the name you give it. But the interesting thing about this is it is using a modern engine to create this code. There's a lot of um, server-side engines to create web pages. And so if you try this string, which is curly braces, not listening to me somehow, curly braces, OK, 2 plus 2, curly braces. Then it tells me 4. So what's going on here is um, this is server-side template language. It stores like a form that can fill in fields. And so a lot of it is static, but when you fill in a field that's calculated or loaded from a database or a parameter, it uses these double curly braces as special meta characters. And this search engine makes the mistake, the usual one that leads to um, code injection, it does not sanitize the input from the user. So the user is able to insert these meta characters, which will indicate code to process. So just like SQL injection, I can now execute code on the server in whatever language this template engine is using. And we are going to see that language is Python 3. So you can fingerprint your server. That's what this little chart does. You put in some of these injections, like this one you put in dollars, curly brace 7 times 7, curly brace, and then you try it and see does it evaluate the 7 times 7. And it does not. So you follow the red arrow. So then you try the next one, double curly brace instead of dollars. This is how you identify which of the popular template engines is being used here. You search for that one, and now it evaluates the 7 times 7, so you follow the green line. Anyway, if you follow this, you're going to end up at Jinja 2, which is what it is. And Jinja 2 is a Python 3-based engine behind this. So we have the ability to inject meta characters because they forgot to filter them out, and the whole engine is really running on Python 3. So how much harm can that do? And the answer is, it's amazing how much harm it can do. So to understand that, let's just look at the structure of Python. <clears throat> so here, if I just open Python 3, interactive will do for what I'm doing here. <clears throat> OK, now if I just make a string, like hello, and then I do a directory of that object, because Python 3 is an object-oriented language. So you can find out what is in that object called s. It's much more than a string. It's an object, and it has all these methods. So you can do things like change it. Um, there should be a lower and upper command. Here's an upper command. So you can perform the upper method on it, s.upper. And now it's cap uppercase, and you can do the lower on it. And now it's lowercase, and you have all these other methods you can execute. That's the thing about an object-oriented language. This thing that is just a string that in a language like C would just be five or six bytes long is an object that's connected to all these other methods. So you can, do, you can find out what class it's in with this underscore underscore class method. So that would be underscore underscore class and that tells me this is a string a string object has all these methods attached to it in python 3. <coughs> all right now we can walk up the hierarchy you can do s class and you can do class again what is the class of the class string that is a type and what is above that is base 
or over on the side of that is base. And this is the root of the entire tree. It's an object-oriented library, and there is a tree. So you started a string, and that is class class, and that is class string, and that is string itself is a type. And there is a base of the entire system, which is object. And then you can come down to subclasses from object, and you'll find some methods. And one of those methods is catch warnings, which has to do with error processing. Now, this thing says there was a network error. Um, I wonder if other people are having trouble seeing my... Uh, okay, why do some classes have name rather than just name? Yeah, the name is one property, and the underscore underscore name is something else. Now, I'm seeing a... Uh, weird error on my screen here, and I wonder if you people are. My Twitch seems to have sort of frozen up on me. Oh, when I refresh it, it appears to be okay. I think. Uh, I'm waiting to see. Yeah, it looks like it is okay. Good. All right. So, anyway, that's... So the underscore underscore class is one of these things that's intended only really for internal use. And if there's a class down here, it would mean there's another class in the normal meaning, which would have a simple meaning like uppercase or lowercase there. So usually the, the um, things that start with underscores are internal parts of Python that they don't really expect the end user to use. And these are things that have a meaning that would mean something to the end user. So you can go up here and come down here and catch warnings is just some error handling method. But the reason why it's important to us is that catch warnings has an import method. So what it means is if you let me import, a, just put in a string and I'm able to add like dots and underscores after it, I can make, turn that string into a root object and I can walk back down and get to import. And that means not only can I execute commands in Python on your server, I can import Python libraries that the developer did not import into the project. I can execute the import command to import other libraries. And I can import the system library, the OS library, and I can execute OS system so I can turn this into a system command line from inside a Python string. It is a little convoluted, but it's kind of amazing. And you end up with these long injections, which accomplish that. And they're, they're just like SQL injection, the experts entertain themselves by trying to find the shortest, most efficient way to do this. So um, anyway, I have, you can watch the instructions here. Hello, class base subclasses will take you down. And one thing to see is you have to go through these subclasses and find them. So if I run this one, this will show me the subclasses of the base object. And on my Mac, there are 190 of them. On my Debian Linux, there were 185. So if I want to see them all, I'd run this um, for i in range 190 colon, space, space, then this print thing. All right. Enter, enter, and there they are. Lots and lots of them. Now I want to find the catch warnings function, so I'm just going to do this differently so it's not going to print them all. I go through them all, then I do this stuff. So I find the name, and if it's got the word warning in it, then I print it. So 139 is catch warnings on my system. So now that I have that, I can do this x is c bracket 139. And now if I do this module and built in, so that's going to bring me back down to another, whoa. Okay, another long line of stuff with some kind of text at the bottom. Um, so I want to store the output and find its class. Let's see if this works. I think it will work. Yep, so I have a dictionary of 153 elements, and now I can find import in there.
<clears throat> so I can get to code execution here. And I think this ought to work there. That ought to execute the system command date. And it does. This is the Unix system command date. Actually, the Mac OS system command date executed in the command line from inside Python 3 here. So there is a string that imports the right library, runs it, and executes system commands from here. So I get system command injection from inside, starting with a Python string. So that is the thing called server-side template injection. And you've got a few um, uh, examples. You've got a few flags to find here if you want to play with it. It really is kind of amazing. Since you can exploit it, you can execute command injection, and you can now hunt around on the server and find some flag files. Um, it is pretty mind-blowing. And it shows you <coughs> the strange vulnerability you get from the object-oriented structure of Python 3. And the key to all is this thing here. Um, the fact that you have an object and you can walk up the hierarchy with these class and base methods, and then you can walk down the hierarchy to get someplace where the developer never intended you to go. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. <clears throat>